Con from a 605 area code. Where's uh, Who's this? Where are you calling from? Greetings. Uh, hey, I'm, I'm Tim. I'm oh. calling from Honolulu. Uh, long-time listener, first-time caller. I started listening to you guys in 2014. Uh, since then, I have been managing a libertarian Denny's for three years, and I've learned absolutely nothing. Um, <laughs> when and, did you start uh, uh, I recently listening? started donating your Patreon for once. How did you, uh, how did you start uh, listening to the show? Um, you know, I think I was just looking for good arguments against libertarians, and uh, I came across uh, some of your debates on YouTube. And uh, right. it's been a while since I've heard a libertarian call in. I know. It's a, it's, I feel like they've all dried up to a certain extent because, um, you know, libertarianism gets pushed when the Republicans are out of power in some fashion. And uh, then when there's no longer that money to push it from, like, the Koch brothers— uh, it's not as as relevant. It seems to me that's always been my perspective. But um, but uh, certainly, I would love a libertarian to yeah. call in. Uh, but go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds about right. But anyway, um, I called in. Uh, I had just two things to say. Um, the main reason I'm calling in is um, uh, yesterday Matt Letch had uh, asked for any callers with DSA about DSA Con. I don't know if anybody called in about that. Not yet. No. Okay, great. And I had one other thing I wanted to say about, uh, I'm glad to hear you guys talking about climate change. Uh, just one person that might be good to have on the show is a uh, uh, renowned sci-fi author, Kim Stanley Robinson, who recently wrote a book called 2140 about New York City uh, in the year 2140 and uh, in an era of global warming. Um, oh, comes wow. at it from a strongly anti-capitalist perspective. Can you repeat um, this? Kim, yeah, about- Stanley, Kim Stanley Robinson? Uh, yeah, Kim Stanley okay. Robinson uh, wrote the wrote the famous Mars trilogy in the 90s, uh, which came at it from a very socialist perspective about uh, the colonization of Mars. Interesting. All right, appreciate uh, appreciate the call. Yeah. Um, well, uh, can I talk about DSA real quick? Or, oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That? Please do. I was wondering, like, you just okay. were gonna just say, like, I mean, you escaped right over that, and I thought, oh, all right. Funny that that you're like, good, good question, Matt. <laughs> it was just a shout out thing. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. Happy to talk about it. First off, um, I, I strongly agree that buying up uh, expensive San Francisco roads is very good practice that DSA needs to be embracing. Um, but for the national convention, it was um, the largest gathering of American socialists in decades, not since the 30s, uh, quite likely have we had something like that. And uh, leaving the convention, um, I was a delegate uh, representing Honolulu. Uh, leaving the con- convention, I was struck by uh, there's a strong sense of purpose, momentum, and potential amongst all the delegates there. But I also appreciated that there was a sort of sober reckoning of the long road ahead. Um, I think that what what's ahead of us is going to require this um, this sort of uh, slow impatience among socialists and broader, uh, broadly the left. Um, but of the things that got accomplished at the national convention, um, we voted to leave the Socialist International. We endorsed BDS. Um, we uh, decided to get behind the 2020 Democratic front runner Kamala Harris. I'm just kidding about that. Um, but well, well, um, let me ask you this: productive... Why? What? What? It, just those two, um, those first two things that you mentioned, leaving uh, the Socialist International. What was, what was uh, behind that? Those are like mainstream no. center left. Socialist International. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. The, the the logic behind leaving Socialist International, I think, is twofold. Um, it's it's the fact that the primary composition of those parties. Um, uh, have have shifted to basically becoming enforcers of neoliberal, uh, neoliberalism and austerity. Uh, a prime example being the French Socialist Party, which found itself, you know, uh, shooting tear gas at labor protesters. Um, so a lot of parties have kind of embraced that uh, shift to the center. Um, and there's also the fact that um, since in the last, you know, 10, 15, 20 years, there's been this uh, outburst of other new formations of parties across the globe that have been to the left of these parties that are in the Socialist International. So we had at the convention representatives from, uh, you know, Podemos, uh, Brazil's PSOL, Portugal's left bloc, for example. Um, So there's this desire to, uh, you know, embrace a new sort of internationalism that is further to the left of the old SI. And um, what's the theory behind supporting BDS? 
Um, I mean, that was, um, you know, it, it's funny because prior to the convention, there was a lot of co- uh, debate about it online. But um, at the convention, it passed with nearly unanimous support with a few with a little bit of heated debate. Um, you know, theory behind uh, endorsing BDS is that we support uh, we support the rights of Palestinians for self-determination uh, and, uh, you know, are against the de facto apartheid of the current Israeli state. Why? Well, I mean, I'm I'm just I'm just curious, uh, not having been there. I mean, was the idea of mm-hmm. of um, simply adopting a um, language that would reflect what you just said? First, I mean, the only reason why I am even raising this is that there's a certain seeding of like of of control of position when you support another organization as opposed to a certain outcome. Right, right. I think I see what you're saying. Um, I think that's just a complicated position that uh, DSA itself is put in being essentially an organization and not a party at this moment and seeing the sort of necessity of working in coalition with uh, different movements and different organizations, whether it is the Democratic Party, independent organizations or BDS. Um, You know, this was uh, certainly not like the main resolution being debated at our convention, um, but it was one that uh, was meant to sh- uh, signal, I think, uh, an ideological shift to the left in many ways. Mm. Does that and answer your question? Yeah, it does. I mean, I'm just I was just curious about that. I yeah, appreciate- I, I think I think you know really, um, really, yeah. The the thing I was struck by is that you know um, I really hope it is a sort of an antidote to the sort of dumb dumb left kind of thing uh, where. You know, we, we strongly, you know, rejected, you know, a resolution that was proposing to try to draft Bernie to, you know, some third party. Um, you know, um, I think we're trying to, you know, uh, Emmett Renson wrote a really great uh, recap article of his experiences at the DSA National Convention. And it kind of just illustrates, you know, the sort of hope and optimism we had as an organization, as socialists, but also just sort of the serious reckoning with like the long, hard road that's ahead. Yeah, I think that's important. All right. Appreciate the call. Thanks, man. Thank you. It's the long step of a revolutionary <laughs> journey. And why would you oppose BDS? I support democratic emancipation and collectivizing the means of production everywhere, other than maybe you as a bourgeois conformist accommodationist liberal, more concerned with attacking Jimmy Dore I... than Joy Reid, who smears the left under the bus every day. Stay woke. Fuck you all. Jimmy Dore rules. Bro- broadly speaking, Dave I'm supportive the CIA. of BDS. I mean, I certainly, you know, like... Uh was not buying any products and continued not to buy products that come out of the West Bank that, that I'm aware of at any point. Um, but I just wonder, I sometimes worry about subscribing to, as an organization, let me put it this way, as an organization, I would be concerned that my organization's agenda is... Um, that I would want more control of the agenda. There's some debate in DSA too. I think about um, specifically uh, young uh, Afro Caribbean socialists too, and like I forget the organization, but there was this debate around like a specific policy set that would come from another agenda being imported into DSA. So I think that conversation is happening like, a lot. I don't mind for a lot of different certain policies right, no, I that are shared what you're saying. by other yeah, organizations, yeah. but it's like when you uh, when you adopt. Uh, basically another organization right you're you're doing that at that moment and where they go right you don't know and i'm saying this like broadly speaking yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I mean as a general policy across the board bds is the only one that came up i don't know if there yeah, was other there's, organizations I think there's other that challenges they adopted too, like that I with dsa think. that you've pointed to as a theme yeah hi folks sam cedar here we still need your help on our patreon page YouTube ads have come back, but not nearly as much as we had before. So if you can help us out, any little bit helps. Head over to our Patreon page right at this URL, and you'll help us keep helping you by making videos.